welcome back to the course today for the next four to five lectures we will be doing a few concepts checks uh, those are very these are very basic concepts which with which you should be very clear before we dive deep into the topic of vibration so uh, i hear this question all the time so here you have a um, an automobile apologies for the poor drawing so uh, this is the mathematical model um, or an idealized mathematical model i would call um, of the automobile so here you can see a discrete mass here you can see a damper here you can you can see a spring this is a spring it is not that clear but this is a spring then here you have another damper here you have another spring so this is an idealized model so i hear all the time why we are so using these springs and dampers and discrete masses like this uh, in modeling all these things. So the first answer is this is a physical system and we are creating a discrete model of the same. So we are not modeling a continue we are not modeling it continuous as a continuous system. We are modeling it as a discrete system. So for example the whole mass of the automobile is assumed uh, uh, to to occupy a point uh, this will be the if you sum up all the masses and this is idealized as a point mass like this okay so this is a discrete model and second thing what you we are finally trying to figure out for any vibrating system we are trying to figure out the displacement or the response of a one point of the, let's say how much your vehicle is moving up if I define x of t like this with respect to time so t being the time so you want to figure find out how your x is varying with respect to time so if i plot it like this i want to figure out how this particular curve will look like and how you are going to go about doing it you should have a differential equation to solve it you have to figure out what equation governs a system and mostly that system will be that equation will be newton's second law Newton's second law. So, Newton's second law say, tells if you sum up all the forces acting on the body, that will be equal to in its simplified form. Newton's second law in its simplified form tells it will be mass times the acceleration. So, acceleration is nothing but the second derivative of your response. So, it will be d square d dt square of your x of t. Now, I will represent the second derivative as x double dot so finally you have an equation of this kind so in this is called a differential equation because you have a derivative now you have to solve for x here is the catch now you want to represent all these forces acting on the system in terms of x because then only you will be able to solve this differential equation so let's say what a spring does is the force acting on the spring is the spring constant times the response or the displacement whereas the force in the damper is the damping coefficient times the first derivative of the response. So see all these springs and dampers they are actually helping us in a way to put all or to relate the response x of t with to the forces to the forces acting in the system so rather than we can look at springs and dampers as certain elements which will relate the derivatives and derivatives of the response and the response to the forces acting on the system thanks all